Hey everyone, Ryan Nordahl here, Epic Whitetail Habitat LLC. Today we're going to discuss the five biggest mistakes I see going into archery season when we have a lot of deer on camera, anticipation's high, and then we just notice our season right from the start going downhill very fast. We're going to discuss those five reasons, so stick around. Hello there and welcome. Today we're talking about top five early bow season mistakes. We've all made them. The key is though, is we learn from these mistakes. Take it from me, these are my top five plus a bonus. Not scouting enough. You know, scouting begins basically when the previous year's season ends. You know, I'm in the woods basically every day throughout the year, whether it be my own habitat work, hunting with clients, whatnot. I'm always out, I'm always observing deer. I think every day of my life I see at least one deer a day and you know, the hunt for the next year, the following season begins the day after. It really begins on day one of the hunting season. That's when scouting begins for the for the succeeding season as well. But I'm out there when the season ends, boots on the ground, you know, seeing what the fall before has produced, where these deer are during the fall, during the winter months, because of the late season. That's why I'm talking about winter. Here in Wisconsin, especially the counties that I hunt, we can hunt right to the 31st of January. So we're taking advantage of that first six weeks of winter. So they're in that winter feeding pattern, going from bedding to food, vice versa. But mostly those afternoon hunts are what are the most successful in the late season. You gotta get out, get boots on the ground. You know, now's the time, you know, we're, roughly about a month before bow season opener here in Wisconsin. Today is the 12th of August and our bow season here in Wisconsin starts on the 14th of September. I know many states open right up on the 1st of September, you know, so you know if you haven't done your scouting yet, you're behind the eight ball. You, you really are. I mean, um, we try to stay off of our properties from now until the first day um, our proving grounds, we're staying out now until the end of October. We start, we're start. we going to hunt that pre-rut on the proving grounds. Um, we may have to go in with a little bit of rye. We'll see how it comes here. We're kind of in a little bit of a dry spell here as far as precipitation goes, and that's just fine. But uh, as far as preparing for, you know, the pre-rut hunt, we may have to go in and do a little top seeding with rye to our food plots and, and that'll be okay. We're still going to meet that 30 day minimum window that we like to have in place um, to keep the pressure off of that property. Let's go to number two. Lack of entry and exit strategies to your stand locations, be it a ground blind, be it a tree stand, be it a tower stand. Is your access and exit strategies, are they hidden, are they concealed? You cannot fool his nose, you cannot fool his eyes, you cannot fool his ears. Deer must not hear, see, or smell you. Smelling being number one, that is their number one defense mechanism, we all know it. I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say that. It seems like so many times, and, and I've seen it too on my own property, where we hunt these same stands over and over again, especially on my brother's farm, it's very difficult to hunt because we really aren't allowed on my brother's farm to plant anything as far as screening and stuff goes. He's starting to come along, my brother is, but he's in the game of production agriculture, not set up for deer hunting at all. We set it up the best that we can. We're hunting the edges as much as we can. What else are we doing? Well, we're either getting a ride on the tractor 
or a UTV or somebody dropping us off in a pickup because there's always that vehicle element on that property. And those deer are conditioned to that. Back on our proving grounds, that vehicle conditioning just is not there all the time. Yes, during the summertime, we're back in there, but we're in there maybe once a week, maybe once every two to three weeks. The vehicle presence at that time is just not there, and it's not there during the hunting season at all. So we're mostly, if we don't have e-bikes, we're using our legs to get in there. You know, I've seen it time and time again where, and it happened just this past year. <clears throat> we're in there. We have our scouting cameras out, our game cameras, if you will, trail cameras, our tacticams, cell cameras. Had a really good shooter buck on camera all season long. He was daylighting very regularly. When October the 10th rolled around, I got a picture of a relative on his UTV. That deer disappeared the rest of the season. A mature deer, if they're not conditioned to vehicles like that, they will vacate the premises immediately. 80 acres is a very small piece of property in the grand scheme of things. That deer disappeared. That wasn't the only time. It happened back in 2015. 153 inch deer that my good friend at the time ended up arrowing um, about 80 acres away, 160 acres away, I guess it was. That deer right there to the middle of October, on the 17th of October, that UTV showed up on that property. Hadn't been a UTV pickup or anything on the proving grounds. From August 1st up until that point, that UTV showed up. We never had a picture of him again. On November, the I do believe it was the 5th that year, again, 160 acres over to the east of our property is where that deer met his demise. But we never had a picture of him again. Very important is your <coughs> entry and exit strategies. How are we leaving those ag fields at night when they're wide open like they are and deer are out in those big ag fields? Again, we're having that UTV. Most of the time, my brother is on his tractor. He's coming back with a wagon or something. We jump on that. He comes right to our stands, picks us, picks us up because we are hunting the edges of those fields. And we continue to see deer continuously um, throughout the season when we're hunting those fields because of the strategies we have in place. We're not just walking out there, you know, and scaring the deer off. The deer are used to that tractor, that UTV, that pickup being in that field. It's when you stop, you know, and they see that human element that they scatter. I'm not saying they won't scatter off the field when that tractor, UTV, or pickup show up. But what I am saying is they're so conditioned to it, they'll run just a few yards into the woods and within a minute or two, they're right back out into the field speeding after we leave the area. Another big one, ignoring the wind direction. Again, going back to their sense of smell, you cannot fool a sense of smell, you never will. You know, I still take all the precautionary measures that I can as far as washing down in scent killer soap, washing my clothes, Get them in the scent crusher bag with, you know, scent crusher, or my ozonics, using my ozonics unit in the tree. It's not 100% foolproof. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But in my experience, I do believe that it has helped change my game as far as deer coming in downwind. I love to call deer. And I know many of you do as well. I know you love to rattle deer in. And a mature buck, any buck really, They'll always try to circle in downwind. And I do believe, and I don't put 100% faith in it, but I do believe that that Ozonics unit has helped change the game of hunting as far as bucks coming in downwind and not being able to smell me. Mature does. It goes just as well as mature does early season when we're at my brother's farm trying to take does off of the farm for him because you know deer damage is 
um, a significant thing on my brother's farm. So we're helping him out by shooting does early out on his ag fields. And that's why we hunt those ag fields early in the season. And, you know, I've been, I haven't missed a first day of bow season since, I can't remember when. First mornings I've missed, um, but I can't recall that I've ever missed a first day of archery season in, since 1984. So this will be my 41st season going to a tree stand. I didn't hunt from 1984 to 1990. When I turned 12 years old, I, you know, I was still still too young at that time. The rules as far as age, minimum age in the state of Wisconsin have since changed, but at that time it was 12 years old. It was when you could start hunting legally. I was going with my dad, just sitting in a tree stand with him, or you know, a few yards away from him in a tree stand. And I haven't missed a first day since, and I kind of want to keep that tradition up, but that's just me. Your philosophy might be a little bit different and that's okay. Over hunting stand locations. You know, it is very possible to over hunt stand locations, especially, you know, with your entry and exit strategies, if you don't have those in place as far as them being screened off, hunting the right wind direction, it all goes hand in hand. You know, every one of these plays an important role in the success of not just harvesting deer, but seeing deer consistently throughout the entire season. You know, so many people, so many of the clients that call me, they, uh, they call me because, you know, that early season, we've all experienced that, that big flush of deer early in the season, that first set out, you know, whether it's the exact first day of the archery season or your first time out on your property, on public land or whatever. Um, but we're mostly focusing on private land here. <clears throat> you go out, you see all kinds of deer that first evening and within a week's time, you know, comes down to over hunting stand locations, over hunting the property and things like that. And that goes with wrong timing with specific stand locations. You know, we try to set up properties. I try to set up, every, and every property is different. There's no rubber stamp, you know, one size fits all plan when I'm putting habitat strategies together. And even on my own property, it's just something that we've, you know, figured out. We've had enough experience over the years. We know what properties and what stand locations work well in the early season, work well in the free rut, work well during the rut, the chase phase of the rut, the breeding phases of the rut, back into late season. Going back to probably some of those early season stands when we're hunting the late season in the afternoons. You know, I, I, see, I see it all too often. Now, I do have exceptions to that rule. 2018, for those of you that have been following me, but for those of you that are new as well, 2018, I had a stand that I normally wouldn't go to until, until the phases of the rut. But in early season in 2018, the week leading up to archery opener here in Wisconsin, it was warm that week. I had a buck, the Captain Hook buck, as many of you know, but if you don't know, now you do know. <clears throat> the Captain Hook buck, he was showing up pretty consistently in the mornings coming to water before going back to bed. He was coming off the neighbor's soybean field to the south. He'd come up the ridge, get a drink of water, head back to bed on opening morning. It was 70 some degrees. When I hit the tree stand two hours before daylight that morning, it was 72 degrees that morning. Very warm, very, you know, not the most ideal hunting conditions whatsoever, but that deer was consistent on that pattern and I was able to capitalize on it. Within the first five minutes of legal shooting time that year, um, what a thrill that was. I love shooting deer in early season, especially mature bucks. Um, if I have the opportunity, I am gonna take that. I will burn that tag early in the season. That was a buck that I had a lot of history with, you know, in the years prior. I think I started getting history with him in 
the fall of 2016 and it continued you know I got his sheds and from the 2017 season in the spring of 2018 and then 2018 he was the only deer I focused on and I was able to capitalize on him within the first five minutes of legal shooting time on the opening day of Wisconsin archery season in 2018 it was just a successful successful hunt um, the story that goes along with it and that's that's the trophy to me um, it's not about inches on the you know inches of antler it's about the history that I build with a deer a particular deer and then going after him when the time was right when his age is right he doesn't necessarily have to be a 160 170 inch deer as long as he's four and a half to five and a half year old or older I'm gonna go after him and he happened to be four and a half year old which to me is a mature deer it may be different from you or for you and that's okay last but not least our bonus not shooting your bow enough I see it time and time again now some guys and like my dad always used to tell me, I've shot my bow so much, I can grab it a week before bow season, down in the basement, been sitting there since the last day of season last year, I can grab it off the shelf, take it out, and I'll be dead on. That was my dad, and he was, he was always dead on. But to me, I have to practice. I have to practice at least every day, at least a few times a week at minimum. But I'm getting into that mode again where I want to shoot every day. So when the pressure's on, when the first day of season comes, because I even get excited over a doe. When that doe is within 30 yards, I'm excited. The blood is pumping. I know you've all felt it because if it ever goes away, if it ever goes away for me, I'm done hunting. If that thrill of even shooting a doe goes away, I know that I've just shot at my last deer because... There is nothing like that rush of getting that first drop of blood in the season and killing does builds that confidence. That's why we take so many does. You know, we have to take the does because of my, you know, the deer damage that they caused to my brother's crops. And uh, we're out shooting our doe, you know, shooting our bows. We're shooting does early in the season. It builds our confidence when we're going after the bucks that we're going after, those target bucks. And hey, you know, we've got a couple bucks for this season that are starting to show up um, fairly early, or, you know, starting to show up on a consistent basis that could lead right into the first day of archery season, and we want to be prepared. I got my buddy and I, we've been shooting consistently. I had my little guy out here, you know, he'll be eight years old this year, He's still not, Still not able to pull enough of, you know, he's still not able to pull the minimum amount of pounds required here in the state of Wisconsin. But still, he's shooting that vertical bow. I never want to put a crossbow in, her, in his hands. And I'm not saying if you put a crossbow in your child's hands that that's, that that's wrong. It's just I want my boy to be able to shoot a vertical bow on his first time out. And we're getting there. He's building his arm muscles getting that strength built up in his shoulders, in his forearms, everything. You know, we're slowly cranking that bow up, and I do believe the minimum poundage here in the state of Wisconsin is 30 pounds. Now, my, my dad, when I was 12 years old, the spring before archery season that year, my first year of archery season legally being able to hunt, he told me if I couldn't pull 60 pounds by the first day of archery season, I wasn't going to be able to bow hunt that year. I went to work immediately, and by the end of July that year, I was pulling 60 pounds, and that's what it takes. Now, I know, you know, there's people out there, shoulder problems, torn rotator cuffs and whatnot, and if they have to resort to a crossbow, that's just fine. And, hey, if you, if you don't have a disability or anything and you elect to shoot a crossbow, I have nothing against that whatsoever. You know, we're all out here to hunt and shoot deer, and... That's the trophy. I'll never shame anybody for the size of buck that they take. It's just I like to go after a deer that I have some history with over the over the course of a few years. And to me, that's the trophy. And, you know, my son, my little guy there, he, he took a 
button buck on for his first deer at age five with a gun that year and uh, I couldn't have been happier for him to see the smile on that child's face and then the next year when he was six he shot a nice little year and a half old six pointer with a muzzle loader plum tickled again I mean he he did everything absolutely perfect. He shot a few does last year at age seven, um, late in the season during our statewide doe hunts. And that was absolutely incredible to see that child's face light up every time that those deer dropped was absolutely amazing. There's nothing, nothing like it. And he, they don't necessarily have to be my kids, any kid out there, anybody, anybody who shoots a deer, be it a year and a half old spike, whatever. As long as they're happy, that's all that matters. We have to quit shaming. And social media has basically all but ruined the sport of deer hunting, in my opinion. <clears throat> if you want to shoot a 200 inch buck, you go right ahead. If you want to shoot a year and a half old spike, you go right ahead. The trophy is in the eye of the beholder. And let's never forget that. But these are the top five early season bow hunting mistakes that I see and I have made and have learned from over my hunting career. And I hope you can learn something from it as well. Thanks for joining me on this video. Good luck as you're wrapping up your habitat projects and food plot projects here going into fall. And hey guys, God bless you all. Keep living the dream. Thank you. Hey everyone. In a lot of my videos, you've seen me wearing this Booney gear pattern. I absolutely love it. It's very competitive with the other brands that are out there, the top brands. I want to offer you 10% discount. If you go to the website and purchase Booney gear, you enter Nordall 10 at checkout, you will get 10% off of your order. Guys, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. You'll want to check that out. Greatly appreciate it. I'm offering you 10%. Nordall 10 at checkout. Thank you.